Welcome back and howdy. In today's activity, I'm going to be showing you some of Fusion's AI tools to help you generate designs. Could potentially save you a step or two in your design process. And again, um, anything that is produced with this is going to be something that you can edit in Fusion. So, Let's talk about this cube. I just laid out a two inch cube and we're going to imagine that this is the corner of a wood shelf. We would like to design a bracket that would attach all three of these visible surfaces together with a one eighth inch pilot hole screw. So I am going to go ahead and start with a cylinder and going into the middle of each of these surfaces. I'm going to type 1 point, uh, 0.125 for my diameter and 0.125 I would also like to have for that height. I'm going to go ahead and edit this real quick and let's pause and make sure that we're not doing join. Let's make sure we're making a new body. Okay, and when we get to the features that we want to avoid, it'll be important to make sure that these are new bodies that we're creating. So I'm going to click over here on this surface that's visible right in the middle. And 0.125, enter for the diameter. Again, we don't want to join, we want a new body, and we're going to say OK to that. Finally, Create a cylinder on this top surface. Again, try to snap to the middle of that grid point. If you needed to, you could draw a sketch on there and find some other places to place your geometry, but we're just going to use the grid that's provided. 0.125, new body, and for the height, 0.125. Okay, so now we have all four of these bodies we would like to automate. And the faces to connect will be these outside surfaces. Not the ends, but these outside round surfaces of all of those cylinders. Okay, bodies to avoid. This is the reason why. I wanted to keep that separated from the three cylinders. Okay, so we're going to create a new component and we're going to click the Generate Shapes button. It will take a while, sometimes up to two minutes, depending on the complexity of your design. And then you're going to receive some results. If you're doing this at home, you're going to see something nearly identical or similar to these choices that I have. Now your top three choices are typically going to be very organic, all right? Meaning they're not necessarily symmetrical, may have some other uh, abnormalities included in them. Like you can clearly see alternative two is very asymmetrical. All right, alternative three has less of an asymmetrical problem. But again, it's a very organic looking shape versus your, the last half of your alternatives will be very uh, much more symmetrical. They will also have sharp edges, okay? So depending on what your needs are, you may choose something more like an alternative five, or in my case, I'm gonna stick closer to the middle of the road, the alternative four. But I can use the slider and also beef it up a little bit so it looks closer to alternative five. All right, I have some symmetry. I also have the sharp edges. So this, to me, in my thinking, represents the both uh, best of both worlds in my design. 
So once I click OK to that, it will generate that new component. And that's what we want. So here I have my new component. And I can turn my bodies off. And I can work with this either using modify tools, okay? Or if I would like to make more organic types of modifications, I can go back right here in my timeline and I can right click and edit that. And once I get into the forms, then I can modify edit form. Then I could make some changes. Let's say I needed to beef up this area right here. I could increase that thickness significantly if I wanted to, or other types of changes like that. OK and finish form. And once I have a form that I am satisfied with, I could try to 3D print it. Or perhaps I want to mill this in a three-axis milling machine, that would also be an acceptable choice. As always, thanks for playing along at home. And whatever you design, I hope you just enjoy the heck out of it.